Okay, so that's the theory. Now let's look at uh, how we would actually do it in code then. So one of the first things then, this is my web API code, right? The same one that I used before. Now, actually to make this work though, we really had to come back to doing things kind of like the old way of MVC. Remember, I took out a lot of the annotations before. So what I've done here is I've come and added things back in, things like required, okay? That wasn't there, right? And we can give the same kind of error messages that we used to use in MVC. We didn't bother with our first visit to API because we had no way to read them anyway. But now we're going to enforce them Again, let me emphasize the advantage of doing it here is it's dry. We're not going to repeat ourselves. These validation rules are right here in the class itself. Okay? And at the same time, um, it guarantees that there will be checked when the data comes to the server. It's not just up to the client to make sure we're uh, going to try to enter valid data. Right? So even things like a unique index on our social insurance number, I've added that back in here. Regular expressions. Why not? Why shouldn't I check that the SIN number matches a regular expression on the server when the data gets there? Perfectly valid to add all the same kind of uh, validation stuff back into our annotations here. I could do my iValidatable object if I wanted to check, I don't know, things like the birth date and so on and so forth. I guess I never got around to doing that, but that's okay. You just add more and more, right? So that was the first thing. And then, of course, I had to do the migration and update the database and so on because this did require changes to the database design. Okay, so that's point one is we've gone and we've added all this range, this other kind of standard validation into the models themselves. Now let's look at the controllers. What changes have we made here? Not much, right? Um, down here, okay, we all, this was all boilerplate so far. Um, down in here in the uh, uh, put for our update, Okay, I did add a try catch here, right? So that we could check for our actual update concurrency exception. Actually, the I think that one might have been there already. It's hard for me to remember. Okay, but here's where I'm just going to then return one error or the other based on it being a concurrency exception. Either the record's been deleted, which is why I can't compare, or there's just been an actual change made by somebody else, right? If it's a data exception, trying to do the update. Okay, very much the same as the code we wrote when we did MVC, but now of course I'm just preparing requests carrying a payload of information about what the error was, right? So if it's a violation of my unique constraint on, in this case, my employee class, okay, that was that index that I added, right, then we can let them know you can't duplicate the SIN number, and then that's what the reason was. If it doesn't mention the that index in the message, then I don't know, I just know it was somebody who was saving to the database. So I'll give them that message and away we go, right? So that's really, it's just a matter of kind of flushing out and giving additional information as much as possible in the try catches that we write inside the Web API controller. So really it's not a lot of change, okay? And it's the same kind of code we've written in the past in MVC. It's just that, you know, all we're really doing is returning different responses with different error messages. Okay, so that's step one. I'm going to run this, so it's actually running. So we have our web API up and going. Okay, it opened on the other screen, but that doesn't matter. It's fine over there. Okay, uh, let's get my other project up. So here's my client application. Ignore all the red underlining. <laughs> uh, okay, let's look at our uh, repository code here. Hang on one second. All right, good old clean and build, and we're ready, ready to go here. So let's just, uh, let me do two things, make more room here. Plus, I should have done this earlier, sorry. I want to turn on my favorite text editor option. So under text editor, all languages, my word wrap. Just so we can see everything on the screen when I make the font bigger for the back of the room. Okay. So really, as I said here, it's not much different. All it is is that instead of saying, uh, you know, we want to pass an exception, I check if. If we have a status code of success, good, right? Otherwise, I'm going to call my create API exception, right? That's in my utility class now. And then the same thing down here. These are for the gets, OK? 
okay, when I'm getting data. And now for the actual add, update, and delete, it's even simpler because all we're doing is replacing the one line of code we had before with the same four lines of code, right? Basically just taking our response, if it wasn't successful, passing it off to our create API exception method and generating my actual exception, right? So that's really all I do here. I left this in place. I might, if we have time, we'll demonstrate just to sh show you what the JSON looks like in the debug window. But, you know, really, it's just a mess of JSON. <laughs> and it's not consistent, which is why it's hard to break it out and read it. So that's really all we have to do there in the repository. Same thing for the department repository. So let's just have a look. Well, maybe first of all, now this code is right from the online tutorial that I've referenced, right? So if we go to the definition though, okay, I put a link here to the tutorial right in my code, which I'll post when we're done. You see, it's just a matter of going through and he deserializes it one way and then traps different things and then checks, oh, are there model errors? Well, let's see if we can do it this way. If not, okay. So he's using a bit of uh, link he explains it a bit more in his tutorial, what the code does, but it's a combination of link and using various uh, dictionaries uh, to basically build up this one collection of errors, depending on how they're put together in the response, right? This approach, by the time it's done, will pull just about any kind of error message from a simple string being passed to a complex hierarchical collection of validation errors, some which have values and some don't, or keys, I should say, and some don't. All right, so let's not worry too much about that. Um, going back to the uh, details page then, right? Okay, so here, right, there's going to be some try-catch added every time we're going to ask a repository to do something, right? We'll now wrap it in a try-catch. It might have been already, but we're adding to that. So here for the, my save button, for example, right? So the try catch asks for all the work to be done at once, right? So we create our repository. We decide if we're going to add or update. Remember that changed depending on whether we actually had an existing ID for the user, or if it's a new one, the ID will be set to zero. That's how we can tell if we're adding or updating. And we just call the appropriate method of the uh, repository. Okay, but if there's any problems, uh, the first one to check for an aggregate exception those happen basically in asynchronous operation. If it just takes too long or times out or things just go wrong with the asynchronous request, uh, that's what you get is an aggregate exception, right? So it's a fairly straightforward exception and we can just pull all the uh, uh, exceptions out of the inner exceptions and build up a string. So we don't have to use our special API exception for that. That's a pretty easy one to pull the data out of. But again, I'll just show message to say one or more exceptions has, has occurred and list them all, right? There we go. All right, so now let's get to my custom one, our API exception. So again, here's my string builder. Uh, in his tutorial, he actually showed the status code, but I always, it just says bad request all the time, so it kind of clutters the screen if you ask me. You can put it in if you want, right? The most important thing is the list of all the errors, and then again, show the message to the end user. And that's all there is to that. Now, if it's a general exception, not my custom one and not from the uh, asynchronous aspect, then, uh, well, let's check if it was that we couldn't talk to the server, right? And if that's the case, right, no connection to the server, that's what I'll tell them. Uh, could not complete the operation, and away we go. Okay. Uh, so, basically, you just put the same kind of try-catch around anything that calls for a repository to do work for you. And that's really all it comes down to. Uh, delete, same thing, right? So we'll do a try around the delete, check for the aggregate exception, check for our, my custom API exception, and then just give my general message, hey, error deleting employee, I don't know why, <laughs> and away we go. All right, so let's just test this out. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? Just to prove that it actually works, I'm going to stop my web service from running first. I'll run the local client beforehand, right? So going to the local client, just running on the local machine. And of course, there we go. So it timed out because the service isn't running. I have the, uh, uh, the URI set to my local uh, web service, not the one up online, right? So I tried to connect to it, no connection with the server, check that the service is running, and await 
or, or whatever or click the refresh button so I'll leave this running okay notice that I dimmed out the ad employee right until we actually get data I don't want you to try to click add because you'll go to the next page and try to find departments and there won't be any right so that won't be enabled until we actually have data but I could click refresh I'll just get my same error message back though because the service still isn't running now let's go back and start the service again and it's up okay so if I come back oh I'll just come back to the actual application I'll click refresh and so it'll just it's just if you check the code in this when I post it all it does is call my fill update <laughs> right so it fills the department oh by the way I moved the call to show the employees to the end of the one to fill the drop-down list that made more sense to me in the end because otherwise you have two two asynchronous calls running at the same time right and then uh, depending on which one comes back first you might uh, you can't show more than two dialogues I found that out <laughs> so uh, that avoided me getting two error messages coming up showing me dialogues at the same time so anyway but now we see it's fully functional right I'm working along let me try add employee if I click save so I've taken out completely that code right that uh, did, did local checks it just sends whatever data we got and sends it to the web API so now these are the actual error messages coming back from the model errors right the data annotations inside the actual employee class on the server right but we know that these are required uh, must enter nine digits in and so on right so if I you know well let's actually do something more let me grab somebody else uh, David Brown here I'm gonna steal his sin number because remember there's a unique constraint on that so I'll copy that let's go into Timmy Brown I'm gonna try and paste in okay, the other guy's sin number and I'll try to save there we go so that went right to the web API it formed the query passed it to the database the database said ah 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 can't do that you create a duplicate sin number right so it actually raised my data exception okay my, the web API caught the data exception looked in the message found that it referenced IX unique in this case IX unique sin actually to be full right and decided that it would actually uh, send the appropriate response right unable to save changes duplicate sin number so you can see how hey this almost is a hundred percent in terms of getting the same kind of effective feedback yeah I know it's in a message box instead of showing up as little red stars beside the input controls but I can live with that okay we've accomplished our task of uh, dry <laughs> which I won't say again <laughs> uh, and the error handling is all in one model it's all in one location and handling it beautifully if I change uh, the uh, message error message in the model class itself way off on the server then that's the new message I would get here and I don't have to update every client to make sure everybody's getting the same message all my 10,000 paying customers will be getting the new error message right away right okay so that's that's pretty much a quick tour oh one more thing we'll try just let me uh, pause for a second all right sorry I can't seem to demonstrate here at the college uh, the concurrency on the local machine I can't get my uh, uh, mobile application to see the local web API I think there's a firewall issue or some difference it worked at home but anyway uh, trust me it does work once I get the, my new version of my web service published then uh, you know we can try multiple clients and so on there as well but uh, all the code is in place and I'll get this posted up in Blackboard for you as well if you could scaffold a quick uh, patient using the Yeah. 